Hey, welcome to the Sacred Soul Podcast. I'm Gina Martel and Shane I'm Goss. Shane Goss. <laughs> <laughs> and we're super excited to be here. I mean, we're going into the holidays. Things are getting really festive and mm-hmm. we happen to dress by accident. <laughs> I <laughs> I know, it's Halloween. <laughs> which is perfect for Halloween. Anyway, we're so excited about Sacred Soul. It is growing in leaps and bounds, and we have so many wonderful things that we just want to tell you about right off the bat before we get into the in- incredible material that we're going to talk about tonight, which is really super interesting. Um, you know, Sacred Soul is the premier holistic uh, healing facility in Canton, Georgia. And uh, we had a big grand opening uh, August 18th, and that was a really nice turnout. We were really excited about that, very well received. And we have some amazing healing modalities that I don't know if any of you had a chance to visit our website. It is sacredsoul.love. We really encourage you to do so. We are independent, so you actually book your practitioner online. And it's very easy to do. We have yoga classes with Hannah. And I have to tell you, these classes have been amazing. Like, I never did yoga before. She's changing my life. (laughs) My husband and I are doing yoga classes with her, I guess, about three or four days a week. And it's life-changing. And she's so good at it. Um, We also have facials and massage with Han, Skincare Essentials by Han. Um, Shane is a QHHT practitioner. Reiki uh, practitioner. And I do the sound healing and with crystal bowls. And I'm also a co-director of Universal Healing Sanctuary, which is a ministry. And we do our meetups here at Sacred Soul in the classroom um, pretty often. And uh, that's that's been awesome with all the events and yeah. community outreach that we do. Yeah. yeah. That community is really growing, yeah. too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we do them <laughs> here. Great. And, then, and then you all do the full moon and new moon. Uh, the ceremonies, get yep. togethers. Over at Mabry Park. Mabry Park. And Marietta. Or Roswell. Yeah. yeah. Roswell. That park <laughs> is beautiful. I love it because I'm a big horse fan and there's horses at the park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but beautiful the park. nights have been perfect for going out. We mm-hmm. get together, we get blankets, and we set our intentions. And it's it's yeah. such a beautiful night. And hey, we manifested this place really yeah, quick. We did. <laughs> we did. It was awesome. Yeah, the, the power of intention and prayer and lifting up those prayers. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then we have uh, Christina, who is a master at um, astrology charts, tarot cards. Uh, she does some mediumship as well, and she does Reiki. We have Brandy. Brandy is just like... And does the angel readings. <sighs> she, she, just, yeah. <laughs> she will just blow you away. She is a spiritual intuitive. And she's also available to be booked here. Um, And I do um, life coaching, QHHT uh, practitioner also, uh, and I'm also a Reiki master. And I I also work, I'm an equine-assisted life coach, which means I also partner with my beautiful rescue horses to mostly help women and children with traumas and stuff like that, working with the energy of the horses. You don't ride. I work with the energy of the horse and the, and the earth, and it's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. So, did I leave anybody out? Uh, we got Han. We got <laughs> we got. Well, we have everybody on the website. Yeah, yeah. Everybody on Sacred Soul website. Check out the yeah. website. You Sacred see everybody's Love. pretty face and picture and all of their modalities and the services that they have to offer. Uh, pretty easy on there, as well as the calendar for all the events. Yeah, um, talk about the event. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's really cool because, like we said before, it's ha- Halloween season. But you have the uh, on the twenty sixth of October, we have the Samhain with Brandy. She's going to come in and and teach us about that, which is the history of what Halloween is, and it, it's not. Just a bunch of trick-or-treating and no, stuff. No, yeah. it's not, no. And interesting enough, so Brandy is Scottish, and um, she knows all that history because that's really where Halloween started, mm-hmm. was in Scotland, mm-hmm. if I'm correct. Um, the UK, All the UK pretty much celebrates it. Uh, it's a beautiful holiday. So we're encouraging you to bring in the names of your ancestors, bring in pictures of them, dress for the part if you want to. Come in and join us. We're going to have wine and candles and a whole bunch of fun snacks to eat. But we're just going to have a night of learning about Samhain, appreciating the beauty of this this holiday. And what were you saying about the 
fundamental churches. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of you know, it's it's a lot of fear based within you know religions uh, that have have put this fear on Halloween, and they don't realize its roots and how uh, beautiful and honoring the holiday mm-hmm. is. Um, and so we're really excited to shine light on that. And, and uh, especially when, when you do have someone that has passed on, uh, it's a great way because that thin, uh, that veil is thin, so thin around Halloween. So that she, they're going to, you know, Brandy's going to talk right. about all that stuff too. Yeah. At that event, so. It is the thinnest time, yeah. uh, I think, of the year when the veil yeah. is the most thin, yeah. except at 3 a.m. in the morning when, they, when it keeps waking <laughs> us up. Uh, but, yeah, it's really going to be a beautiful uh, ceremony, and I'm excited for Brandy to be doing it, yeah. and then we'll have the ritual. And we're just – the ritual, when I say ritual, we're going to be honoring our past relatives and bring in – you know, try to do some research. And, and if you never met your great-grandparents, find out who they were if you can. Yeah. And great, 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 you know, f- go all the way back. It's so interesting when you start researching – where you came from. So this will be a really beautiful event yeah. for everyone to get into. And then um, in November, on the 4th, we have uh, David and Christina. Is and that December or November? December. In December. Did I say okay. November? You said November. It's December. Okay. <laughs> December 4th. December I remember because that's the day before my birthday. Oh, <laughs> like, that's right. It is. I'll so, be there. <laughs> yes, good. So December 4th, uh, we're going to make it a, a, a wine and candlelit you know, uh, night of um, David's going to talk about the beautiful spiritual benefits of the crystals. Uh, if you've been to the shop, you'll see these gorgeous, huge stones of amethyst. Yeah. And he has a great collection. Oh, uh, yeah. the most beautiful yeah. amethyst I've yeah. ever. I cannot yeah. believe the richness of the purple of mm-hmm. that stone. Oh, and we have yeah. one here that has quartz attached to it too. Yeah. It's amazing. And David has a bunch of other crystal jewelry like mm-hmm. this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Pre night, I think, is what it is the healer stone. Was, yeah, Beautiful. it's a great one. Yeah, I, have I feel like I'm modeling David you are, and, Christina and Christina right now. You are. It's, uh, Christina does the uh, electro, I'm going to probably say this wrong. Um, the electro copper cop oh my gosh <laughs> she takes bugs <laughs> she takes she takes a bug sense and makes them into jewelry <laughs> <laughs> but uh but she copper plated copper there plated. we go but it's a very scientific way she does it um yeah i bought one that's the big butterfly that she yeah. did and it's really yeah. gorgeous she yeah. made this one for me and yeah it's the scarab and the abalone oh, shell I on it scarabs. so this is modeling some things for David <laughs> and Christina. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we have some beautiful um, jewelry. He's going to be talking about the crystals. And uh, do join us because that's going to be a really wonderful night. And then we're going to open the shop up for holiday shopping. Yeah. So if you have people in your life that are really into crystals or really open to spirituality, we're going to have a lot of really cool things for you to purchase. And then they're going to go, how did you know? And you go, well, because I found yeah. Sacred Soul. And yeah. they have a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, we there. I love the upfront in the shop. We have some really good stuff in there. And your book's up there. My book, well. Horse Stories. Horse Stories, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of good little things up there. Tools and clothes and items. Yeah. Yeah. So stop by any time. You can purchase them. Yeah. yeah but um, definitely come by the shop. And uh, if you, like, we just talked about the events and stuff. But once again, it's sacredsoul.love. Mm-hmm. So check that out. Yeah. Um, one thing that um, that I'm really excited about, especially for the uh, all the events coming up. We have events between Sacred Soul on the calendar and uh, Universal Healing Sanctuary who has our regular meetups here. So um, there are plenty of community events. And what I love most about it is that we have, like we said before, a variety of people coming from a variety of backgrounds mm-hmm. and experiences who are all just learning and growing together. So... Um, that that is an amazing safe space for anybody to come right it, it, and it's uh, completely it's, yeah, safe yeah because i know with my coaching i have um i've i've had several clients that and especially now that everyone's waking up and becoming more mm-hmm. in consciousness they're searching right yeah. so i've had some people with some really intense religious backgrounds yeah. and they come in they're like i don't even think i believe in god anymore and i'm like Okay, let's talk about that, you know, yeah. and, and try to guide them where they're comfortable 
You know, no. we never force it. We're very yeah. accepting of whatever you want to believe in. Yeah. But, you know, if you're seeking answers, you know, yeah. we can we can help you with some of that. Because it is kind of a confusing time. It's, a lot of chaos in the world right now. Yeah, but it's also exciting. It is. Because we provide, you know, with everybody here, all the practitioners that, that work here at Sacred mm-hmm. Soul, but also the community side of it, it's like we all understand that we're, learning and growing and we're learning we get to learn and grow from one another yeah. too and yeah. it's so cool how how meeting someone at a you know metaphysics group can give you that puzzle piece of information that you didn't know you were searching for right and like that's that's like the kind of synchronicity that every every time we have an event that happens to at least one person it's usually more than that though so that's you know what really cool uh, that reminds me of the psychic shares that we do yeah. also. Those are really yeah. fun. They are amazing. Um, and that leads that leads with that, too, because I wanted to mention that. Um, yeah. So we invite you to come for Psychic Share Night, which we posted on our Facebook page, yeah. which is Sacred Soul uh, Facebook yep. page. We also have an Instagram page, and we have um, the website, yeah. sacredsoul.love. Um and we just invite you to bring your whatever divination tool you use. We yep. have we bring extra tarot cards and angel yeah. reader cards and oracle cards. Um, mm-hmm. I love to use my pendulum. Yeah, you know yeah, you're um, good with the pendulum. I'm yeah. not so good. That's not my technique. Thank you. <laughs> well, my husband bought me this little round wooden like calendar thing, and I've learned to use that. And that my pendulum is amazing. My son got me my pendulum. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have kept that thing through the years, and it is so accurate. It's crazy. Yeah. But we teach you, like if you've never done this before, um, that's fine. Come and join us because we share our tools, and, um, you know, we're here to answer any questions and to teach you. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the whole, what I love, and Psychic Share Night has become a night where it's like, it's like everybody requests that like hey when, when's the next one because um even as me like i i will usually read tarot uh, mm-hmm. as a psychic share night or maybe do some reiki or something mm-hmm. like that because i do reiki but uh, it, it is a safe space to try something you don't know about there's um because it's all about um a synchronicity the way that christina describes it which we keep saying christina she's the director of universal healing sanctuary as well but um, she describes it as an opportunity, a tool for divination is just an opportunity for synchronicity. Mm-hmm. So, um, so whatever that divination technique may be, where, whether it's the pendulum or, you know, you're using astrology or numerology or, numerology or Reiki or psychic reading or, or, or tarot, any of those tools helps you learn a little bit more about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so even I like encourage people, I'm like, okay, so, so I'm going to do tarot. I'm not a tarot. I don't ever claim to be a tarot reader, but you know, you, you learn the symbolism. You, it's just a place to learn about it. And, um, and that takes the pressure off because it's never the person that does the healing, mm-hmm. right? right? It's just the, the moving energy that goes through you. Right. So you're just like, I, you know. I'm just. I'm just open. Yeah, I'm just (laughs) open right now. If you're just open, you know, um, and trust and have that safe and that that safety and the love and everything, then then you'll you'll be very surprised at the answers that you get at night and how. I mean, we will be laughing and crying and <laughs> all having a great time because we're like, wow, I did not realize that I needed that information or but yeah. it, that's and that's eye opening. Di- yeah. And that's divine timing, it is. divinely guided. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like it's like listening to you're driving in your car and all of a sudden a song comes on, mm-hmm. you know, that you need to hear those lyrics. Yeah. That is not a coincidence and there yeah. are no coincidences. Yeah. And we've heard that a million times. Yeah. But that song was on purpose, you know, or you read a book and there's something, you, a line you read and that really somehow that resonates with you. Yeah. That's a message. Yeah. But when you are awake and open like this, you know, yeah. Wayne Dyer says this and, and I, and I love, uh, he, he quotes Rumi a lot, and I think this one was uh, C.J. Lewis. Um, have a mind attached to nothing and open to everything. Yeah. 
Therefore, you're not making judgment on anything. You really have no expectations on anything. And whatever yeah. comes, it's going to flow into you. And mm-hmm. then it's and then it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, it, if we allow it, you know, cuz mm-hmm. you know, we know we know a lot about manifestation and and we talk about that sometimes and this is something that I realized, you know, in I'm really good at manifesting, but sometimes I limit myself because you know, for a while I was like, okay, this is what I'm looking at. Like, I just want this much, right? I was okay with this much. But what I realized is that, wait a minute, the universe wants to bring me this much. Yeah. Why am I limiting myself, mm-hmm. right? So have a mind that's, you know, uh, open to everything and, you know, yeah, stuck on nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I like what you, what you said about, oh, I can't, I can't tell you how much, well, well, frequency is the language of the spirit Mm -hmm. and i i want to say that that's that's a quote from someone but i say it so much i can't remember (laughs) um but uh but yeah like you say you'd be driving a car and something will hit you that that's shuffle on your ipod you know i mean that is divination too you know what i mean because we're all you know you know someone could come up to you with a message for you and they don't realize it's a message for you, and they're channeling something you need to know, you know? So it's just as natural as we live and breathe, you know? We don't realize that a lot of the time. Right, and and with all the openings now, all of our gifts coming in and, and the ascension and, and being aware and open to it, we are getting better at this. We are getting really good yeah. at this. And it's all about surrender. It's, it's the all about surrender. Part. I know. <laughs> That's what I said. Don't focus on just this. Yeah. The computer's just like, what's wrong with you? I'm trying to give you this. Stop limiting yourself. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> All right. Well, we did have, we did want to recap on some things that we talked about last time, mm-hmm. didn't we? Yeah. So we had our first episode and we spotlighted because we're both level two QHHD practitioners Mm -hmm. um we spotlight um what is qhht first off dolores cannon um what uh how our journey and that process of of finding out what quantum healing hypnosis was Mm -hmm. and reading dolores's material and uh in, in our journey through becoming a practitioner right, yeah, in the right. courses at the QHHT Academy. Uh, we also talked a lot about our own healing through the process of it. That was interesting. And, and how, <laughs> yes, I mean, talk about a level up and then how we've been able to help others mm-hmm. and the miracles we've seen, oh, amazing. Um, which are never guaranteed. You know, we talked a lot about on free, free will mm-hmm. and the belief system mm-hmm. Um and and what else so we we talked about uh integration that's important that's the most important part of the all the things that we're doing here with mm-hmm. the you know in the healing is is uh when we have this great experience within uh a healing session whether it be coaching i mean or or getting uh, answers through divination at a psychic share and I. It's mm-hmm. like, how are you integrating that positive and helpful information, which I call homework, mm-hmm. um, into your life? And, uh, uh, you know, so we, we love the integration part because it's like, well, why are you doing this if, if, if you're not going to do the work? You know, right. the real, and it's the real work, you know. it's And it's really important that, and, you know, it's something that I don't, I don't know, like whenever I've worked with a practitioner outside of us for whatever, I'd never hear them say, you need to integrate. Like, I think I've had one person say you need to integrate. And so I didn't hear it a lot, Mm -hmm. but I know that we say it a lot because we realize the importance of it. And that's whether you integrate sitting in meditation for a little bit longer and, and meditation, you know, it's not just about relaxing in meditation which a part of it is because it does calm you down but also really taps you in to that it types you into your higher self Mm -hmm. it taps you into messages that you need to hear taps you into angels it taps you into god you know mother father god i mean it's 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 got so many benefits to it just the breathing Mm -hmm. you know i know i do some breathing exercises or techniques in uh in my coaching 
and that that's so beneficial breathing the right way in meditation is really important a lot of people mm-hmm. don't even do that yeah. correctly you know and then you know going outside yeah and grounding s- sitting down yeah. and grounding and taking your shoes off I mean I yeah. do that a lot you yeah know, with the horses so yeah that's your favorite I that's feel like favorite. if you could do that all day you would. <laughs> <laughs> you're like <laughs> uh, you know, the horses and and lately and the yeah for the Be past the like three days I've been in the woods yeah <laughs> I know you texted me the pictures. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> I've, I've been in the woods, and I just felt really called, you know. Yeah. And if and um, I found this one place near my house that has um, it's this big forest, and it's got this beautiful water, and I just I don't know, I just felt really, and I was all by myself, and I'm like, I hope nobody weird is walking through the woods, <laughs> and thinks that I'm weird. And, you know, whatever. But and then the, the next day, I wanted to go again, and then I and then I went hiking with um, our friend Holly uh, the other day mm-hmm. too. And so it was, yeah. But the integration is really, really important. Um, being outside, sitting under a tree, sitting. You know, your dog, your animals ground you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The horses yeah. are great at that. But um, my dog Amber loves to come in with um, clients sometimes, and she goes up and hugs them. And they're yeah. like, oh, oh, I needed that hug. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> the dogs animals just, know. They do. They know, they know. before we do. Yeah. But but dogs are really, their thing is for, we learn con- unconditional but, love yeah. from them. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We have to have an animal communicator on sometime. Because yeah, that would be fun. They have, you know, they are ascending. The animals are mm-hmm. ascending. We've noticed some very interesting behavior with the annual I have. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I have a lot, oh, not a lot to say on, on that, but I've noticed um, when I did start, when I had my awakening journey, mm-hmm. um, I read the law of one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was my Let first like introduction to metaphysical material. Um, and as we're ascending through, through the densities and as we are rising in consciousness and going more into the unconditional love from the the ego program right. we're more following our intuition and stepping aside from those ego programs the the animals are kind of we're noticing they're kind of understanding us more getting these personalities and and seem to be very uh very easy to learn a lot of things. I mean, have you seen these dogs that literally will tap on buttons to you know, they talk. talk to you? <laughs> I it's it's That's wild. Crazy. So I don't it I you know it it seems like it's pretty, you know, yeah. there. <laughs> so I I'll let me tell you something really interesting that happened to me. So our dog Amber, um, she is very I, she was a human in a past life. I don't know how she went backwards, but she's a human. <laughs> Sometimes I think she's my grandma or my nana. But um, one night I was sleeping and I kept hearing barking, but not outside. I heard it in my head. Okay, now mm-hmm. I can do some animal communication, although I have yeah. friends of mine that are really, really good at it um, and really good details. And I just kept hearing barking and I was in a sound sleep. And I, and I woke up and I'm like, Amber, Amber's telling me she's in the barn. She'd gotten stuck in the barn with the horses. She'd been out there all night. It was like <laughs> three o'clock in the morning, which is the witching hour <laughs> when yeah. you wake up. Yeah. And I, and I, he was still working on, my husband was still working on photography, mm-hmm. you know, in the studio at night. And I said, I think Amber's in the barn. And he went out there and opened the door and there she was. Wow, she wasn't you barking. Know. You can hear. Uh, we're. F- I'm far enough away. Yeah, I your hear house is far from the house. But yeah. I heard her, and my and it was constant. Arf, 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 you know, and I, I knew that. Yeah, and there she was, and she ran right up to me. Thank you. <laughs> you left me in the <laughs> and barn. And that all one night. time didn't blue. Um, or uh, was it blue or was it Dodger? Said he, he wanted an apple or something. You heard him. Oh, uh, they're always, they're always, yeah. they're always talking. They're like, they probably always want apples. So. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you a real funny one. Um, so my friend, um, Sandy, she does animal communication and she had talked to Dodger and Blue. I, my horses are called Dodger and Blue. I have two. 
And um, Blue mentioned to her that he was tired of the shutters on his stall door or in his stall window. Um, when it would rain, it would blow them on. And if he was standing with his head out the window, they would smack him in the face. And it was yeah. really ticking him off, right? Yeah. So he told her st- to stop letting the windows do that, put the locks on them or whatever, yeah. so they stopped hitting him in the face. So one day I had him at my friend's barn for a little while, and he put his head out the door. And I'm standing there with the, the guy that cleaned the stalls and everything, and it was raining. And the doors came and went, bam, and hit him in the face. And Blue turned around and looked at me like, I mentioned this already. <laughs> he started like bucking in his stall and pacing back and forth and looking at me like, why do I say anything? If you're gonna uh-huh. do that? I felt so bad. And I, I told the guy that with the, the clean the stalls, I said, this is what happened. And he believed in that. And he, he goes, oh my God. And he ran around and he locked the, the windows and then Blue put his head out and he didn't get smacked in the face. And he turned around and I swear the horse said, thank you. But it was so funny that he asked for that. I forgot about it. And yeah. then he reacted when he got smacked in the face. Yeah. Those, your horses, um, they're amazing to work with. Thank you, you know, and you use them with the, the coaching. Mm-hmm. And um, I know from, from my experience working with Dodger and Blue, both at different times, mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing like that. And of course, people that have worked with horses, they all know, they all know this, you know, but for someone who's, um, you know, doing the coaching with you and, and it's kind of their for introduction to working with a, uh, working with a, what a two ton animal, mm-hmm. you know, basically is, um, uh, that, that you don't realize, oh my gosh, like you did, you do that uh, exercise where you whisper into the ear of mm-hmm. the horse, and if he's lying, if you're lying to yourself mm-hmm. about how you feel about something, mm-hmm. they'll nudge your heart. Mm-hmm. And if you got it right, they, I mean, they just completely communicate with you. And when you've had an animal that large tell you, no, that's not your greatest desire, or no, that's not how you really feel about that. And they nudge your heart. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like that. I mean, that that's pretty impactful. Nobody can tell me that that is not not true. You know <laughs> what I mean? You know, like that is real and that happens. Thank and you. It's magical and beautiful. And very yeah. healing. Well, you know, they are rescue horses, mm-hmm. and I have a real soft spot in my heart for rescue horses. Um, and I did a lot of voluntary training. Uh, with the, the SBCA in Miami. A lot of horses, you know, when they're picked up and abused, neglected, they don't like people mm-hmm. anymore, um, and they're terrified. Mm-hmm. So I adopted these two, and uh, a lot of their stories and a lot of my my coaching clients that I worked with, and, of course, Anonymous, are in my book, um, mm-hmm. Horse Stories, The Healing Way the Horses Teach Us Healthy Relationships. So it's yeah. been out for a little bit. It is available here in the shop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's interesting because and you mentioned about how people that have horses, of course, know this. No, they don't. Most people that have horses just ride their horses. They show mm-hmm. them. They just do standard stuff with horses. But I have learned, well, when I was a kid, I could always understand and talk to horses. And I've had a great love of horses since I was little. But I really followed the Native American philosophies yeah. for horses. And I also follow and quote in my book uh, my horse heroes. I call them the, um, the uh, father, son, and the Holy Spirit of the horse world, uh, Buck Brannaman, Ray Hunt, and um, Tom Dorrance. And they were amazing with horses. And so it's, it's tapping into the spirit of the horse, which is mm-hmm. what the Native Americans do. So... I don't do like you don't get on and ride my horse. I work with the earth and the energy of Gaia and the the, the way nature is mm-hmm. and I work with the energy of the horse, but the horse knows before I know. Mm-hmm. Like I just I'm just the guide. So yeah. it's 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 really interesting and we'll have to do a another podcast about that where I can get more in detail yeah. about it, but it it ta- it really taps into and empowers uh, women that have gone through traumatic backgrounds mm-hmm. and abusive backgrounds, and they just 
they just are in pieces. Like they've, they've, I call it Humpty Dumpty syndrome. Yeah. You know, they come and I got to put them back together. Um, but the horses just know. But it really taps into that inner child yeah. too. And the horses are really good with that. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, yeah. I mean, women already have a, a thing with horses. Horses have male and female. They have the masculine, the yin and the yang energy mm-hmm. combined, you know. And so I think that's what we're drawn to with the horse because horses are mostly handled by women. Yeah. A lot of men have them, but yeah. they're more, you know, handled by women, ridden yeah. by women. So when I know when I worked with you and with your coaching and the horses a while back, mm-hmm. um, that's what we worked on a lot was the inner child mm-hmm. and boundaries mm-hmm. and really um, – uh, getting really deep, you know, and, and that's what I was saying. It's like, it's like, I thought that people that worked with horses just knew how magical they were, uh, how they could just see through you and your energy and see you. Yeah. But not everybody's works with the horses like that. No, the no. horses know that the horses do, but a lot yeah. of people don't. Okay. And, and, and this is where the typical equestrian is not going to like me because <laughs> some people just consider their horses ATVs with four legs. Oh. I yeah. handle my horses differently. And because of those, my three horsemen, you know, that I, I studied and read and, and all that, um, I learned a lot of things that, which made a lot of sense to me that I was kind of doing mm-hmm. anyway, but it really made more sense once I read it in yeah. their books and stuff. And, you know, one of them is just letting the horse, letting the horse think it, that whatever you ask him is their idea. Because yeah. then they'll go along better with it. They like it better when it's their idea. Yeah. Okay. You can suggest it. They may not want yeah. it, but then there's a way to work with that to make it kind of turn into their idea. And, you know, a horse herd is a lot like people. The herd is, is the family. Of, yeah. It's the community. And, okay. and we we are social like they yeah. are social yeah <clears throat> so in in working with the with the horses i will i use their communication patterns i use their body language i use what the herd uses and yeah. teaching people that you realize how similar it is to humans yeah. how we treat yeah. each other too yeah it's really interesting so yeah when we did the inner child stuff which i which i do with a lot of people it's very intuitive work for me, but I, I I go way down into the root. You know, if you have a mm-hmm. tree that has disease and it's sick, the way to heal it is to go into the root, mm-hmm. right? So I don't do like the superficial, let's just talk about this for 27 years and whatever. I really <laughs> get in. I say that. I have a friend that actually did therapy for 27 years, and I thought... I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I never want to take 27 years <laughs> to help somebody. But um, anyway, so, yeah, it's getting into the core, the yeah. root of really what it is. And, I, and it, may, it may look like I'm doing some weird stuff. But, <laughs> it's very unconventional. But type. it's very unconventional. <laughs> it's very spiritual. But it works. And I bring, yeah. you know, and what I love about it is, you know, there's some elements of QHHT mm-hmm. in the hypnosis that we do. Yeah. That I that I'm I've actually been able to use more now in the inner child stuff. That is just yeah. it it sends you back even farther. Yeah, you know. And that's what I was so excited that and inspired to talk about because there's so much. You know, of course, anytime you start any person starts their healing journey, they've just had their awakening. They're kind of going through one, whatever it is. It always goes back to those early years. It does. And what we found in QHHT a lot of the times is some people think, oh, I'm going to come in and have this life of, you know, all these past lives come up from Atlantis or wherever, or, you know, I'm going to be an ET on a planet. It's like, no, they came in and they saw exactly what they needed to see, Mm -hmm. which was they're four years old <laughs> in this <laughs> lifetime, you know, and that's, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's very, very healing to get to the root. Cause they're like, Oh wow. I didn't realize I was carrying that around for 27 years. You know, I, I know like, like I didn't even remember that. And I, everything in my life has been based off of that 
emotional memory that I've stored in my subconscious that I didn't even know. And one thing that I love is the exercise that you do, that you did. Um, yeah, I think you do that with almost everybody uh, when you're doing that. the inner child work. But when you're you're doing the exercise, you're you, and this isn't in QHHT, mm-hmm. but it's like you get a, in a meditation and you guide someone through the meditation, which mm-hmm. is in hypnosis is what you're the doing. The inner child part, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you go to meet your inner child um, and you talk to them, you're with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that in itself is quantum healing because, and it's not very, it's not very different than QHHT Mm-mm. when you think about it. Of course, we have the whole, uh, you know, hours session before we even get to the hypnosis <laughs> part in QHHT. Three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but, uh, you take, you know, you take your client there and, and they get to be themselves talking to their, their future self, talking to that inner right. child. Right. And that's essentially how, what we're doing with QHHT, but it's your higher self that comes through your, to you to talk to you now. Um, so you have all these layers of the, the future self, the higher self, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And we can all always go into a meditation and access and time travel yeah. to that a memory <clears throat> or something and be there with ourselves and, and release, be there with the emotion and learn to, you know, put love instead of fear or anger or whatever it is there and, and learn to release that. So Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's um that's a good point too. And you we I want to emphasize what you just talked about because when people come in and want to do the QHHT, they are expecting to go to a past yeah. life. But you don't always. Mm-mm. I mean, I've had the same thing. I've had clients just, they, they have something in the present life that they really need to radically change mm-hmm. and fix. And so we are dealing sometimes with the present, mm-hmm. but back in that memory as a child. The inner child thing I do, um, I, like I said, it's, it's not conventional, but we go through life angry, sad, depressed, you know, everyone's had something. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. If there's anybody. Nobody comes out unscathed. No, <laughs> <laughs> we all gotta learn our lessons. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah we gotta you all know, learn our lessons. Yeah, the minute. You know, the minute that we're born, you know, our, our parents hold us and, and they look up and, God, thank you, they're perfect, the baby's perfect, everything's fine. And then, you know, instead of following that pattern of, of do, you know, raising that child in a beautiful, loving, spiritual way, all their baggage and all dumped, of their garbage yeah. gets dumped on that child. That child is a clean slate, you know? Yeah. And so as we're growing up, you know, that baby is picking up daddy's habits of having a temper yeah. tantrum when he can't handle his own life or mommy's, you know, excessive drinking or, you know, or or being mean to the dog or, you know, what yeah. I mean, yeah. they're models, yeah. right? So we grow up with a lot of that anger and that frustration mm-hmm. and we, we're like, where, you know, where did that come from? And um, when I take you back, to actually meeting your inner child. It's really the first time that I, I know my clients at least have ever met their inner child. Mm-hmm. Because as you're growing up and you have all those emotions, that inner child is inside of you like in a cage. Yeah. And that's what causes, oh, I'm going to go start drinking and I'm going to start doing drugs and I'm yeah. going to be rebellious, be rebellious or be the yeah. victim. Or, and they're in and going, get me out of here. Or they're crying yeah. or whatever. It's the frustration. It's you but it's the inner child, yeah. right? So yeah. when we can go in and I can introduce you, it's like you get to love and see that, that child. Yeah. And when I get you to hold it, and I, now I have dolls. I got dolls. I used to give people pillows, but now yeah. I have dolls. <laughs> and, um, well, you gave me, an, it, I was old school. I got a pillow. You got a pillow, <laughs> yeah. But um, just, the, just the act of going like this, I have you holding the child, but the act of doing this, you're actually mm-hmm. embracing yourself. Mm-hmm. And then that love, you're feeling that love. It's all like a metaphor, but it's yeah. real. Yeah, You have that love going up in your heart, 
and that's love for you, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, I, you know, I'll say, on a scale of zero to ten, how much love do you feel for this child? Some people have said four. Really? And I know that they are heartbroken, that yeah. they did not get the love and the nurturing that they should have gotten when they were little, yeah. you know? So what I do is I'll pull in a memory of something really good. Like, give me give me a memory of something that you were so proud yeah. of yourself about, that you were very much in love. And if they can't find it, if they have a child, I'll, I'll pull on that memory of that child. Mm-hmm. Tell me how much you love that child, your, your daughter or whatever. And then I'll transfer it into yeah. that person. And usually by the time I'm done with everything, that person now has gained that love for themselves. Yeah. And it's amazing because our chakras are right here. And I'm working right here with the yeah. heart. So I have my, I, I love to use my Lemurian seed crystals. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use an amethyst. A lot of times I'll use the uh, rose quartz. Mm-hmm. And I just... just loving loving energy Very from loving. those crystals and i'll put it i'll put it on their back which i i was doing that intuitively i didn't know that there was a chakra back there yeah, and that's actually back. very healing yeah. and um and then i'll do like light language you know over them and i, and I yes. and i'm like listen i have no idea what i'm saying but my that's soul what, does yeah and my heart does and your soul understands it and oh, yeah. they understand it yeah so just Give me a second yeah. here. And yeah. then they can feel like their their heart chakra. Like oh, I feel some yeah, pressure heart. in my heart or yeah. something. You know, it's amazing how that's quantum. Yeah. yeah, you feel I mean you're 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 surrendering and allowing that energy to come through um with the channeling, you know, and the light language mm-hmm. and and it's beautiful. First off, Thank you. because I've witnessed it mm-hmm. and it was very beautiful. And I, you know, it's one of those things you're like, it's like listening to someone sing a beautiful song in a different language. <laughs> you have no clue what they're they're saying, but you do because of the emotion behind it. It's energy. It is. It is energy. It's frequency because it it's is sound. Yeah. So you can feel that within your body, um, but also like the we are. If you want to talk about, you know, ascension or, or the object of, of this whole experience that we're having on mm-hmm. this planet, mm-hmm. we, we're on the level of the game is love. I know that's the that's the level we're on. Yeah, you know, so it is all about the heart and the unconditional love for the self. Yeah, it's the heart. It's and, the sacred heart. And that's why the the um the uh we start out with the inner child stuff because mm-hmm. we got to love ourselves first and right. understand what that is. Mm-hmm. But then we start to see that love pour out of us and the others and see that unity, that Christ, that the it Christ, has. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. sacred, yeah. Um, sacred heart, Christ the Christ yeah. heart. Yeah. That's another thing because with, with, and, and it, when I'm doing the inner child, it's all love. And yeah. I, we all have angels. We all have guides. Yeah. Um, you know, I when I regressed Sorelli, she came in as a guide. And yeah. Followed this yeah. Boy. That was an incredible. That was amazing. Yeah, that was... But I know that we have these, and I'm telling you, I always I always warn people when we're doing the, the the inner child, your angel is going to come in. Yeah. And they're always super duper tall. Yeah. And they many times people have said. I gotta have like warmth that just wrapped around me. I go, those are the wings of your angel. Yeah. And then I'm like, and I hug in this. So I go over and hug and use my stone and all that, all that love from the angel and from mm-hmm. the guide and from them finally connecting with their inner child and all those things. I mean, that's, that is absolute pure light of God. That is source light, yeah. okay, that yeah. comes in. And that's everything that we're doing. This is the purpose yeah. of everything, like you yeah. said. The purpose of everything that we're doing with no fear, with belief, with with faith. It's a faith yeah, in this, it's trust. you know, yeah. is absolute love and acceptance and forgiveness. Forgiveness, yeah. And that is, I mean, and believe me, I mean, there's some people out, I'm like, I don't blame you. If you don't <laughs> That was pretty bad. But, you know, I always encourage it because forgiveness is not condoning what happened. Mm -hmm. It's lightening your load. 
-hmm. It's lightening you so that you can move past it and mm -hmm. heal from it. That person, that person that did those things to you may never change. Yeah. And Dolores talks about that mm -hmm. in QHHT. Yeah. Like she said, you have to forgive. Yeah. Because, and then people will say, well, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah. Stand in line. It forms the left because we've all been there. I mean, I grew up yeah. with a lot of childhood traumas. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I know you did too. And most, most of us have had them, but it, it really is important to do the forgiveness mm -hmm. because it's so, um, it's so healing. It's yeah. very cathartic when you can yeah. get all those emotions out and you get to tell that person, this is what you did to me. And then, and I forgive you. Yeah. It's like that movie, The Shack. Yes. There's yeah. not any churches that liked that movie. Yeah. They called it witchcraft, which I love. I that thought movie. it was a Christian movie. I'm it, confused. Technically. Oh. But <laughs> a lot of the churches didn't like it. Oh. Because there's things yeah, in that movie are, that, yes. like Jesus said, you know, when, um, what was his name? The actor that lost the daughter. He said, um, oh, but, you know, they're walking out of the water and he goes, yeah, aren't you Christian? And. And Jesus said, Christian, what's Christian? I don't look like a Christian. I just want friends. I don't want prisoners. I think that's a mouthful yeah. of really good yeah. information. Yeah, yeah. You know? So <laughs> I feel like that might be a whole other episode. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> but, we have uh, so much to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, but, but yeah, I mean, the, the forgiveness aspect, yeah. I, I think it gets to a point where, like Christ was, it's like, he was such in a place of unity, consciousness, mm -hmm. and unconditional love. There really wasn't a reason to forgive because you get to a point where you're in so much understanding, you're not offended. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I don't think the planet's there yet, mm -hmm. but that's what we're working through is, you know, getting all this junk, stored junk out of us mm -hmm. to that is there as a you know a, a thing to get triggered to be offended and upset about things yeah does that make sense yeah well so and wayne dyer says that a lot too that people look for reasons to be offended yeah they will look for that's, reasons. To that's be why offended. we have all these preferences and mm -hmm. everything stored in our subconscious but yeah. if we get to a point where we're in such a flow and state of surrender and love and unconditional love and acceptance and then we we uh we understand how we don't want to be offended how much better it feels you know to have that forgiveness and understanding that it's not about you how people treat you is a reflection of their internal environment you know that is very and true not you're like i can't be offended by that because that's not my stuff that's their stuff mm -hmm. you know yeah, it's like I am rubber, you are glue. <laughs> like, but, you know. <laughs> but let me just say something. That I found I, I was very happy to see this. Um, I read this one day. They were talking about acceptance and, and spirituality and everything, and they said, "You can be accepting. You should be accepting, but don't put up with any BS. Mm -hmm. Like, don't let people treat you bad. Yeah, just like the boundaries. You've yeah. got to be able to set boundaries. Yeah, because, like you said." They've got their own nonsense to deal with. They have their yeah. own garbage and clearing that they need to do. The problem is a lot of people don't want to do the work. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like it's like QHHT. Once we do the session with somebody and we say, you have to listen to the recording for yeah. several days so you understand. Yeah. And yeah. then they don't they don't do it. So yeah. therefore the healing doesn't yeah. always get completely uh, done. Yeah. Right? Because sometimes yeah. it has to be done listening to it every day because there's yeah. maybe codes that were put into it yeah or nighttime and sleep, yeah right yeah that's what Dolores and you know has said um listen to the recording once a day and you always your higher self the sc the subconscious always gives you homework mm -hmm. you know because you're asking them like are they ready to release this can we heal this now within the session um and then they'll either say yes or no we try to get a yes, but sometimes our higher self says, I know if I heal, the, heal this today, they are not going to change. Mm -hmm. So I need them to take this itinerary of things home and they'll see it improve over time because I need to see that they're going to change, you know, that they're going to do the work that's going to be helpful for them and lead them on their highest path. Right. And, um, 
and that's that's why it's like oh my gosh you know uh we got we have to we really have to uh take that part seriously just as seriously as you paid for a whole day and committed a whole day to your healing journey yeah. you need to commit your whole life to your healing journey exactly. because that's the most important thing well, we're doing yeah you know? i mean why bother going and spending oh. any money whatsoever to get yeah. a healing and the healing is a kickstart mm-hmm. it's the introduction it's, to a book. it is yeah you know it's just like that here's the introduction we're going to read you the introduction but it's up to you to go through the chapters yeah. and finish i have this issue with some of my coaching clients i've had some some people come in and they maybe have worked with me for two sessions or three sessions yeah. and i can see they're not they're not doing their homework and i give homework yeah they're not doing their homework. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And then at, at that point is when I'm going to say, listen, I have too much integrity to keep taking your money. You're not doing the work. I love money. I'm a fan. I use it. But <laughs> I'm not going to take it. Yeah. Okay? So if you're not willing to do the hard work, this mm-hmm. is not a cakewalk. Mm-hmm. This is hard. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. So, you know, we do a lot of fire walks, right? Yeah. You know, I always say you got to walk through the fire sometimes to get to the other side. Mm-hmm. But you'll get to the other side. And then when you do, you look back and go, wow, look what I went through. Yeah. I did it. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. That is a beautiful thing. You know, it, with all the uh, the shifting and the energy and <laughs> everything that's been happening in the <laughs> world the past month. It's crazy. A couple weeks. Yeah. There's a lot, I mean, a lot of this, I mean, there's always layers uh, to your journey, you know, your healing journey. And sometimes things come up again to, for you to look at and you're like, I'm over this? No. Then yes, you know, or yes, you know, depending, it's like you're swiping left or right on your, on your fear or your whatever it is that's coming up. And you're just always, you know, you look at it and you're like, I release you. And sometimes it's as simple as that. But, you know, there is a lot of the inner child stuff coming up for a lot of people a lot. right now. And um, even if you've already majorly, you know, majorly worked on that in the past, you know, it's been it's still been coming up, up for a lot of people. And, and one thing that you said a little while ago um, was remembering getting in touch with that inner child and remembering those emotions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you said, I think you said this loneliness. um, If I remember correct, the loneliness of an inner child. Um, Or maybe that's just what I was thinking. I think you said that. Oh. In another talk we were having. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Earlier today. But but that's been coming. Oh, you you were talking about the parents. Yeah. Yeah, You're Mm -hmm. like the loneliness, the mother drinks or whatever. Is Mm -hmm. that, that, those examples? Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot about that coming up, like with the, I remember growing up in church, in the Baptist church, they called it the God hole, Mm. which is the void you're trying to fill, the loneliness void. I know about Um, the voids, yeah, I talk about those in coaching. So I feel like that that kind of comes up within that that time as the child, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was neglected or whatever you're dealing with with the parents or the dynamics and stuff like that. Um, and what's so what's so wild about that is that, as you said before, when you are working on the heart, mm-hmm. after you've addressed that part of you, that that guide comes in, that angel or whatever mm-hmm. it, it is to them. Mm-hmm. And that really is so impactful because you realize, wow, I'm not alone Mm-mm. and I never have been alone nope. because look at how I can travel to my inner child right now. When I was a child, did I feel that presence with me in those times that I did feel that loneliness, you know, and I know a lot of people that can remember that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. When they're like, I just had a presence around me as a kid or whatever it, it was or a memory where they thought someone was there or no was there or they were outside or what ha- you know whatever the memory is mm-hmm. they had someone there with them yeah and it might have been us from 
the exercise of going back to visit them, or it might be, you know, your higher self or a guide, or, you know, we know a lot of the children's have, have their, um, their guides. And they know about them. Yeah, they they know know about about them with their kids, their imaginary friends. Well, didn't you feel things when you were, Mm -hmm. so I did too, you know, and my mom was always preoccupied with other things, so. I, I know that loneliness. Like, I always yeah. felt really lonely as a child. Yeah. It was just me, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we can all kind of relate yeah. to that a little bit, especially when you're the first one's born or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I, I think it's really incredible when the when the angel comes in and reminds us, you know? Mm-hmm. But unless you're open to it, and I do open yeah. you, hopefully you'll stay yeah. open, but you have to have some openness to really accept that and when you do then is when you really can start feeling it all the time with you Mm -hmm. in the worst times yeah yeah and in the best times Yeah. yeah so yeah it's amazing Wow, can you believe an hour has flown by? Yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> We're like little hens. We could yep. talk and talk and yep. talk. Yep, <laughs> yep, But I so, love these conversations. Me too. We hope me you're too. enjoying them too. And listen, if you all ever want to write us yeah. and make, maybe make a suggestion on a topic that you'd like to talk about, yeah. why not? Let's yeah, that, that, would, too. that would be amazing. Any questions about the coaching, uh, energy healing work, mm. uh, events? events that you would like to have here mm-hmm. you know or you'd like to see us do that would be awesome because we're we have a variety of healing right. uh, uh and community events metaphysical meetups and stuff yeah we have like minds to closed to nothing and open to everything so. yeah <laughs> yeah so and we just all love to be together and right learn, so so go to sacred soul dot love that's our website and then talk about the uh, universal healing sanctuary oh yeah um I'm co-director of uh, Universal Healing Sanctuary, and Christina, you've heard her name come up quite a bit. Uh, She is the director, and we have our meetups here at Sacred Soul about every other week in the classroom. Uh, You can get more information on our ministry and resources uh, at www.universalhealingsanctuary.com. Um, for our events, uh, members retreats, um, all that stuff is on there and as well as our sermons and everything. But uh, we do a lot of events with, uh, here at Sacred Soul. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, you'll see us tagging Sacred Soul constantly. Um, and we're very, very excited to have this space together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. And um, do we have comments that people can send us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you put uh, anything in the the comments that you'd like for us to speak on, uh, we will probably be having some of our healing practitioners come in that mm-hmm. work here as well. Um, to interview and give their uh, expertise. Uh, Talk so, about different topics, yeah, too. Yeah, we're, we're very excited about that, yeah. yeah. But just just know that, um, that we're here, and a lot of, let's just mention quickly maybe some of the ascension symptoms that some people may be going oh, through. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I yeah. always want to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, tired. Um, Headaches. Head a lot. Every a lot of people are being been getting the headaches. Um, there's been a lot of lower chakra purging, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, various <laughs> ways. <laughs> um, uh, it might feel like a stomach bug right, right now. Is how it's been for a lot of people. But mm-hmm. but uh, you know, that's uh, just like the earth has been. Showing purging us, too. she is purging. She's purging yeah, these hurricanes. And, and it's purging. to make us lighter, you know, mm-hmm. to make us lighter for the ascension and and uh, increase our light quote quotient. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I read we were like what ninety seven percent now five D, like we're really? just right there. Really? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Holly sent this thing today. Oh my gosh! I was reading. It was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're moving. We're it was moving. from Dolores. Yeah. Cannon. Oh, from the she got uh, from Dolores website. Cannon. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we are moving fast. Moving on up. <laughs> we're feeling it. We're just releasing. Getting yeah. ready. And listen, if you're having any ascension symptoms, write them in the comments below. Yeah. And we'll jump in and email you back, and we mm-hmm. we want to help you. Yeah. So we'll see you at the next event. Um. 
October 26th. Uh, uh, the 26th here at Salwin. Sacred Soul. Yeah. yeah. So dress right. appropriately and bring your relatives. It's going to be fun. Ancestors, yeah. <laughs> Names and pictures. We welcome you. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. Blessed be.